A very good evening to everyone. Welcome to Global Online. And here we are back with our UGC NTA net preparation for paper one for your upcoming cycle that is June 2024, wherein we have started parallelly with MCQs also. And these MCQs on are on the recent topics in the form of your hypothesis, plagiarism, as well as research method from the topic that is unit research aptitude. And this particular questions are being uh, selected from the various papers, the topics which are, uh, you know, frequently asked in the examination. And from that basis, these questions are framed. Before we start with questions, a very important announcement from 19th of Feb. 2024, we will be starting our new batch, which will be live on our app. So how to join this batch, how exactly to go ahead, we will be uh, telling you in this video itself. So just make sure that you are staying tuned till the end of the video. Starting with the first question, the research method which focuses on establishing casual relationship with controlled variables that is dependent, uh, moderator and uh, in, uh, independent, okay, is called as what? So we have a casual relationship among the variables. So is it ex post facto, survey method, case study method, experimental method? We have done all these methods in our life class very well. So we know ex post facto method that is not also called as causi, which talks about something which has already happened. The fact that is after words ex post facto method is something the fact that has taken you know already has taken a place or after the fact has happened we try to uh, find out the you know we try to do a research on that survey method it's you collect the data in order to come to a conclusion on what purpose you have started the method case study method is something which talks about in detail relationship and experimental method is something which talks about you know the relationship uh, in the research with respect to the manipulation as well as the constant variables. So when we talk about the research method which focuses on casual relationship among the control, that is with the control among the variables, it can be any variables, it can be independent, dependent or moderator will be called as what will be called as definitely the experimental method. So this type of method is known as what the experimental method, right? Coming to next is we have given certain characteristics and they want us to find out the characteristics of quantitative research paradigm. Paradigm is nothing but pattern. So when we talk about quantitative research paradigm, is it hypothetic deductive? We have studied deductive at what? Deductive where it starts with a general understanding comes to a very particular or specific understanding. It focused on natural settings, its lay importance on generalization, it emphasizes numeric data or it says that literature review plays a minor role but justify the problem. So which of them can be a research pattern which talks about quantitative research in nature? So when you look at all these options, the one which talks about quantitative research paradigm, okay, is basically something in the form of what? It's something in the form of which is hypo deductive, which has which is based on natural sorry, which is based on you know, uh, which lays importance on generalization and also it uh, lays emphasis on numeric data. So yes, something which is hypo deductive in nature, something which gives characteristics, something which talks about data, nothing with respect to literature review or the natural settings, right? Coming to the next one is for advancing knowledge, the latest strategy used by mankind. So if you want to advance your knowledge in research, which will be the latest strategy? Consulting, deductive thinking, scientific thinking, inductive. Inductive and deductive, we have done very well. Something which starts from general coming to specific will be your deductive thinking. Inductive thinking which starts from something very specific or particular and comes to what? General. This is your inductive thinking, right? But here we are not talking about, you know, only inductive and deductive. We are talking about advancing the knowledge. So advancing the knowledge will be what? Authority or deductive thinking, scientific thinking or inductive. And I told you advancing is nothing but it is talking about what? It is talking about progress. It talks about development. 
so if you link progress and development from the given below it will only get connected to scientific with studies things in a systematic way with studies things in a logical way with studies things you know with an organized way and hence all these will help the uh, knowledge to enhance or to move forward or to get advanced right now coming about the next topic so next question so next question is basically on research ethics okay so we have studied something called as axology okay we have studied something called as ontology also and epistemology also so axology is something which deals with research ethics it has a direct connection more often with with stages of research so when we take into consideration ethics ethics is connected with one stage directly of research there are many steps and stages of research but with one step it is directly connected is it defining or limiting the scope defining the population problem formulation or deciding about the statistical techniques so the one you know uh, the connection of ethics which uh, definitely has you know a impact or it has ethics has an impact with that stage is something listed below so the one which is defining the scope one is defining the population a problem formulation or statistical technique so based on all this when we come to ethics part no it will only be linked with or connected with the problem formulation so during the problem formulation or reporting the research findings what are the ethical principles which you have taken care of so these really plays an important role and with research ethics these are one of the keywords which you will always find in the question right coming to the next question is which of the following is not a critical feature of collect qualitative research so we studied what is qualitative research we studied what is quantitative research so they are telling us this is not a feature not please remember this word very importantly not actual settings data form a uh, seeking relationship or research you know immersed in the present situation past or you know uh, such situation so which of them is not a critical feature of qualitative research so from the given list actual settings that direct the source of data data that takes place of the world establish the relationship becomes immersed with the situation so out of the given options okay the one which is not a qualitative feature of uh, research is one the one which establishes the relationship among the facts so this is something which does not comes as the feature of qualitative research right which which is definitely found in experimental or you know in the quantitative uh, quantitative research now very basic question but yes this was one of the previous year question uh, at as, as i said it is this such type of questions are always bonus questions so you definitely get you know uh, something out of it so the research can be classified as basic applied or action it can be classified as quantitative or qualitative it can be classified as philosophical historical experimental all above and we have if you remember we have done all this research so research something is basic applied action qualitative quantitative philosophical or historical so the research can be all of the above so obviously it can be basic fundamental it can be pure it can be qualitative quantitative philosophical historical survey based experimental research so the right answer is all of the above right now here we have the question a researcher fails to reject the null hypothesis in his or her research what implications will be the principal research hypothesis has so there is you know there is something called as null hypothesis there is something called as alternate hypothesis so the researcher has failed to reject the null hypothesis what implications it will have so this is you know it's it's uh, you have failed to reject it so what will be the applications or implications on alternative research to accept it to reject it not to take any decision or to improve the research so right like for example here one thing which you should remember very basic is that if one hypothesis gets rejected other gets accepted vice versa if one gets accepted other gets re rejected so there is nothing there is something called as accepting and rejecting but there is nothing some called as not taking decision or improving there is nothing like that so in such case if one is rejected 
So obviously the principal hypothesis will be what? The principal hypothesis will be something which is accepted. And the same thing I have given over here. We have null hypothesis, alternate hypothesis. There is, you know, there is a relationship between. So the positive statement says that, yes, there exists a relationship. Negative statement says that there do not exist a relationship. But if one is positive, other is negative, another is negative, one is positive. So when, if one is accepted, other gets rejected. And if the one is rejected, other gets accepted, right? Okay. Coming to the next question, plagiarism. So this is something, you know, where you do not give any credit to your, to the actual author or the uh, research scholar and you try to prove it as your own research. So that is called as plagiarism in your, in the technical term. So plagiarism, it is because of creative use of previous data, copying unspiriously and making use of it, quoting someone uh, and citing him or her, uh, referring to previous data and working over it with new objectives. So what is plagiarism? It is, you know, plagiarism is what? You have to tell just a simple meaning. Is it creative use of data, copying the data, quoting someone or, you know, referring to the previous data? Out of all this, if we talk about plagiarism, so plagiarism is basically copying. So you are not honest and you make use of the research work, which is completely wrong. And it is not also ethical. It is something which is unethical, right? Okay. Coming to the next procedure, next question is think aloud procedure. So when we talk about think aloud procedure, is it a source of data? Is it a technique? Is it a strategy? Is it a scientific method? So think aloud is basically, you know, uh, what exactly think aloud talks about. Think aloud is basically, so basically think aloud procedure is any part of a secondary data or it is one a technique or it is a strategy or it is a method which is used in research. So when we talk about think aloud procedure, it is, it you know, like for example, you are trying to do a research on something and in that research, you are trying to find something. You are trying to, you know, come out with a conclusion or result. So in such case, think aloud procedure will be something, it's a used as a technique, which is used to understand the strategies and, you know, performance of a learner as you're doing a research on learner. There is something called as observation as also one of the technique. So these all comes as what techniques in research. Coming next is diagnostic evaluation. So when we talk about diagnostic evaluation in research, okay, it talks about, you know, the performance of the student. It talks about the remedies. It talks about the degree of achievement or it talks about the progress and failure after instructions. So you are trying to evaluate. Okay. It means you're trying to find out the result, but in the form of diagnostic. And this is then situation given to you that students performance as, as the beginning of the instructions, the cost and remedy of the problem degree of achievement or learning progress and failure. So when you're trying to diagnose, when you're doing a research on, you know, finding out a problem and it, if it is basically diagnostic evaluation, it is something related to your cause. You're trying to find out the remedy uh, with the problems during the instructions. So a research is done to understand that, you know, the teacher, uh, I mean to say, teacher is whether teacher is able to deliver the lesson rightly or not what is the problem being faced so such type of results if you want to find you do a diagnostic evaluation in research and that's what is listed with costs and remedies right coming to the next is process in which which helps the researcher to develop a practical solution to address a problem quickly so basically if you see this type of research is nothing but action research so what are you talking about? You're talking about a process which will help the researcher to find a practical solution to the problem quickly and efficiently, right? But how? With the help of these steps. So what these steps are? So what you should know what is the process of action research? And these are the acronyms given and what these acronyms mean. So when we talk about action research, it is basically it starts with planning. Then it comes with action. Then it takes into consideration observation as a technique. And then comes what reflection as what the result. 
So plan, action, observe, reflect is something where we want to try to seek the problem as early as we can, quickly as we can and efficiently we can. Next, the important prerequisites of a researcher in sciences, social sciences and humanities are. So if a researcher is from science, is it from social sciences and humanities? It is basically laboratory skills, records or supervisor topic, supervisor topic or critical analysis, archives, supervisor topic or flexibility or topic, supervisor, good temperament and preconceived notion. So from the given list, which can be prerequisites, okay, which are must or required uh, with respect to sciences, social sciences and humanities. So looking at all those, okay, it will be supervision the topic, the critical analysis and patience which is required as a prerequisite in science, social science and humanities, right? Coming next to is the research which is exploring new facts through the study of past. So you are trying to bring something new with the study of past. Is it philosophical? Is it historical? Is it mythological or content analysis? Which analysis is taken into consideration when you are trying to explore the new facts through the study of past. Now past. So if we talk about past, definitely historical research okay, is the one or you can also call it as archival. But in archival, you have limited collection in the form of special collections like your documents, your lab, lab, library, uh, you know, documents, such an audio video tape. So such type will be coming at archival. But normal past records which you get, it is called as historical research. Okay. Coming next to ex post facto. I have explained you this ex post facto means what? The research which is carried out after the incident. The research which is carried out, sorry, prior to the incident. The research which is carried out along with the happening of the incident. Or the research which is, you know, uh, carried out with the help of possibilities. Ex post facto. I have also explained you after effect. Okay. After the act. So ex post facto something where the incident, sorry, the research is carried out after the incident has occurred. Okay. It means it has already occurred and then you try to take out, take the research. Next is in research method, generalizations can be made applicable to the group of people who share a defining characteristics. Now, what this group is called? So, we have cohort, we have case study, we have uh, panel or we have this double blind, blind or double blind. So, you either have a blind or a double blind study. So, let's see how it will be. So, I, I think many of you may not be aware of these uh, studies. So, let me first explain to you what these studies are. So, as I said, case study is an intensive, in-depth study. Cohort is a study which is done with a group of people. Panel is a study which is done with a group of, you know, uh, people who will be analyzing uh, the, the research. And blind study where there is no awareness. So, it means the, the subjects are not aware. And if it is double blindness, the researcher as well as the subjects are not aware what is happening. So, here we are talking about, you know... Uh, in research method, generalizations can be applicable by a group of people who share a defining characteristics. It means who share the characteristics commonly. So we know the group of people who share the characteristics commonly is nothing but it is called as cohort study. Right? Okay, so this is something we did, you know, in the last class we did theory out of this. And that's the reason I have taken MCQs today. And any student who is not aware, what does global online app works like? So go to the Google Play Store, download the app, register yourself with your registered mobile number, uh, enroll, you will see the course over here. Once the course is, you know, selected, you will get access to all the content of the course, wherein you can go to this particular course as per the particular unit study and try to make yourself better day by day in order to crack your June 2024 examination. Numbers are written on the screen. You can get in touch with us. Uh, and any doubt and any query, do reach to us. And thank you. Have a great day ahead and see you in the next class. Thank you, everyone.